Welcome to our Wednesday night Bible class. And uh, we just thank God that you're able to be with us and once that's um that's with us now and then once it's coming on later. But again, we just say praise the Lord to everyone. Glory to God. God is so awesome. And I love that that, that selection that my God, he's been fighting our battles and he continues to fight for us. Glory to God. Glory. He's a mighty God. At this time we have our opening uh uh, prayer coming from Evangelist Diane and and the scripture coming from yours truly and then we getting ready to go right into our awesome lesson uh, coming to again by, by Evangelist Owens part two glory to God but right now we are, you are in the hands of Evangelist Diane for our opening prayer praise the Lord can you hear me there you go. I can hear you now. Yes. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you now. Yes. I uh, I just want to you know know if there, if there are any prayer requests. Yes, yes, yes. Just yeah, just, just want to keep our senior your seniors and um, bring your families up in prayer. Yes, yes. Thank you. Want to keep all the bereaved families. Yes. Up in up in prayer. Yes, yes. We have you know the Sanders family, the Moors. Yes. And there are others. Yes. We don't even need to know their names, mm -hmm. but we know they're grieving. Yes. yes. And we know God. That's we know God is a healer. Yes, yes. And we know we know He hears their heart. Yes, He does. Yes. So as we look unto God. Thank you. We bring everything and lay it at his feet, knowing that he cares for us. Yes. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you. Thank you. We thank you on this evening, oh God. We thank you because you've allowed us together once again on tonight. Yes, Lord. We thank you because you have given us strength in our bodies. We thank you because you've given us the mind to want together on tonight. Yes, Lord. Oh, God, we thank you for being a keeper, oh, God. A keeper not just of our strength and our bodies, oh, God, but our minds, oh, God. Yes. But everything that's going on, oh, God, you kept us in our right minds. Yes, Lord. Thank you. Oh, God, we thank you for covering us with your blood. Yes, Lord. Lord, we thank you for covering our families that are near and far, God. Yes, Encamping the angels around us, oh God. Yes, yes. As we went to and fro on today. Yes, Lord. Lord, we thank you for healing bodies, oh God. Yes, thank you, Jesus. We thank you for staying the hand of the enemy yes. for this very time. Yes, Lord. Thank you. Lord, we bless your name on tonight. For your name is great. Yes. You are great. Yes. You are mighty God, and we thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. We're not just thanking you for what you do for us. We'll be thanking for who you are to us. Yes. Because we love you yes. with our whole heart. Yes, Lord. Lord, we just love you. We want to love on you, not just with words, but indeed with our life, God. Yes, yes. We bless your name on tonight. Yes, we thank you for all that are here, that is gathered here tonight and all that will come on the line later. Yes. We ask that you go into every home that is represented tonight. Yes. Saturated with your love and your power in the name of Jesus. Jesus. Yes. Oh God, do something special for yes. them, oh God. Yes. Touch in the name of Jesus. Yes. Heal in the name of Jesus. Strengthen in the name of Jesus. Jesus. We bless your name on tonight. Yes. We ask you to touch our teacher. Yes, Lord. Give her what to say to us, oh God, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Yes. And then let us hear what you have or what you are saying to us, oh God. Let us open up our hearts and our minds. Yes. That we may receive your word. Yes, Lord. That we may walk it. We will walk in it, God. Yes, Lord. And live in it, God. Yes. Lord, we bless you. Yes. We thank you. Thank you, Jesus. We bless you and we thank you. Thank you. We are so grateful on tonight. Yes. Oh, God, many things could have happened, oh, God. Glory to God. But you said live on. Yes. Glory to God. Many things could have 
transpired in our families, oh God, but you protected us. Yes. And we thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Your God. We lift them up before you want to know. Yes. In the body. Give them the desires of their heart. Yes, Lord. Right. Thank you, Jesus. We ask. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. And we thank you. Glory to God. Amen and amen. Glory to God. Thank you, Evangelist Diane, for that beautiful prayer. Our scripture, opening scripture is coming from Psalms 37. It says, fret not thyself because of evildoers, neither be thy envious against the workers of iniquity, for they shall soon be cut down like the grass and withered as the green herb. Trust in the Lord and do good. So shall thou dwell in the land and verily thou shalt be fed. Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. Verse 5 says, commit thy way unto the Lord, trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. May the Lord have a blessing to read and hear this word. That was Psalms 37, verses 1 through 5. Glory to God. Again, we thank God for each and every one, allowing us to, be, to come together one more time, allowing us to be here one more time. We have one more worship selection song, and then we're getting ready to go right into our Bible class lesson for tonight. But right now, you're in the hands of the elect Lady P. Come to Jesus. Beautiful selection. Glory to God. Right now, we're getting ready to go into our Bible class lesson. And right now, I'm getting ready to turn into the hands of Evangelist Orn for part two. There's more on the table. Glory to God. Glory to God. Right now, you're in the hands of the Evangelist Owens. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Yes. God is good. And just pray for me as I'm using my phone so um, I don't see to push over to see if there are any comments or any hands. I am going to need Lady P to help me out with that. I give honor to God, to my pastor, Pastor P, Pastor Glenn Wayne Perkins, better known as Pastor P. <laughs> To, um lady p um uh, uh i'm about to say evangelist so hey <laughs> <laughs> you know what some things i apologize for and some things i won't okay just just know that <laughs> amen lady uh perkins better known as uh lady p i bless god today pray my strength in the lord or pray for me um because last week I was not feeling well at all. And um, today I'm exhausted. Um, I had to work a little overtime for somebody else. So I'm just getting in pretty much. But I'm always glad to talk about the word of God. Actually, that's my joy. That's my strength. So I never get tired of talking about the word of God. And um, we have here, uh, this is night uh, lesson part two, and um, just to give a brief um, um, synopsis or a brief summary of what we've already covered. Basically, it's just a thought, and I always say I'm sharing because I am not going to even expect to talk alone, talk by myself. I like input, I value input, and that's what, you know, because we're learning together. And I want to just let you know, this really cannot be exhausted for this one reason, because we are discussing the body of Christ, which we know, according to St. John, um, the first chapter in the beginning was the word. The word was with God and the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him. Without him was not anything made that was made. And when we go down to the 14th verse, we know that the word tells us or is explaining to us that the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory. The thing is, the word, which is God, was embodied in a natural body named Jesus. 
he was going to make sure that he fulfilled the law. And we needed a savior. Oh, we needed one really, really bad because the law was holy. And the law told us, and you can find that in Leviticus, the penalty of sin is death. And because God in his infinite wisdom knew that man was going to sin, before the foundation of the world, the lamb was slain. Why? In the mind of God. And then the word was what? May flesh. It was then manifested. So we have in the beginning, when the before sin, during the dispensation of innocence, there was no sin. But once Adam, who had the word, who God, his father, gave him the law, the word, once he sinned, it brought sin onto mankind. And mankind was going to need to be redeemed. And the only way it was going to be redeemed is by that holy word of God, which happens to be in the law, even in the law of Moses. We say the Ten Commandments, that's it, but it's not. It's at least 613 commandments. But it's just too much to try to really fulfill. They couldn't do it. They couldn't do it with all the rituals and traditions. That's why we are under grace today. We ought to be glad. Moses, Abraham desired to see this day. They only had the foreshadow of what was to come. But we have experienced that that has come. Jesus came. He did just what he said he was going to do. So he wrapped, he said, prepare me a body. Ah, that body is being prepared today in a whole different way. But he prepared his own body. When Abraham was about to um, sacrifice his son, Isaac, and the, he, that was surely a test of faith. But while he was in emotion, about to come down with the knife, about to sacrifice his son, you know, it, it, it must have been a lot going on. But he had to obey quickly. Just, 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 just do it. Couldn't wait for understanding. How am I going to be the father of many nations? How am I going to be father of many people? And you're asking me to kill my seed, kill my son. Oh, but he obeyed. And that right there was a shadow of what was to come. The Lord wanted to make sure we understood. So he gave parables and signs and wonders and shadows and types. And that was to bring us forward to where we are. So since the law of God, the holy law of God said the penalty of sin is death. He said, prepare me a body. And Abraham not realizing when his son Isaac said, Lord, uh, uh, dad, there is the wood. There is the, the, we have the fire, we have the wood, we have the altar, we have everything in place. But where is the sacrifice? In the, the wisdom of God, Abraham spoke something that was so key that brings us forward to this day. He said, the Lord will provide himself a sacrifice, a ram. The Lord will provide himself. We could have had a period right there. But he was in the natural speaking. Yet... There was something very prophetic in what he said, not knowing. Even when the people crucified Jesus, moving fast forward, and they said, crucify him. His blood be upon us and our kids. They thought they were saying, we don't care. Hey, we just, they just get rid of him. Just, just crucify him. But when they use these words, his blood be upon us, not realizing that's exactly what you should want. The blood of Jesus applied to us. See, so we know not what we say. We don't, that's why it's not good to be quick to utter things before God. Because things, words come into manifestation. See, the word was made flesh. Uh-huh. But then if you think about what Abraham said, that was made flesh. The Lord will provide himself. And he did. His blood be upon us. And it is. 
Isn't that wonderful? So we must watch what we say. Let the words of our mouths, Lady P's favorite scripture, and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. Why? Because words matter. And so here we are in the word of God today, realizing that the word of God told us the penalty of sin is death. So there was going to be a need for mankind to be redeemed back to God. He wanted to us to be reconciled, brought back to him. But there was no blood pure enough to do it. So for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son how did he give it? He had to prepare him a body. He had to overshadow Mary, a virgin, as it was spoken in the word. And he put himself into her. And he let that baby be born, grow, be a baby, be a child, and grow and be subject to his mother. He allowed the stages of life because we will have no excuse. He slept, he cried, he ate. He was in flesh, flesh that died. So he died, yet he was God in the flesh. So he was tempted uh, as we are on every point because he was in flesh. But being in the flesh, he wanted to teach us that he in the flesh was the bread of life. Now, when we come forward and we realize that we're so grateful that, that he brought us out from among the law. We're under grace now. We partake of his body. He said, do this in remembrance of me. Because when we recall to our mind, we have hope. But it's not just recalling to have hope. It's also recalling to, as we sing, look where he brought me from. It's recalling to appreciate. Not just where we're from, but where are we are and where we're going. They tell us about our black history. They say, we, you can't know where you're going if you don't know your past. You can't even appreciate where you are if you don't know your past. So history is there. They may not want to really talk about black history and all the gory, sad, ugly, cruel part of it, but it's there. It doesn't stop it from existing because it took place. It happened. The history was written. It was made. It happened for a reason. You cannot erase history. It was there. And I see Brother Troy come, is coming on. Anybody want to know about his? He's our official. We have nominated him official historian. So history is there. History it, it should be used as building blocks to not take you backwards, but to move you forward. History shouldn't have been something that taught us how to improve and do better. So in the history of the Bible, we find these laws, we find these traditions, and, the, and we hear, we have read, salvation is of the Jews. Why? Not because Jesus loves us less than others, not because God so loved the world. But he came through the lineage of Judah. He had to have an example, a family of an example, because the Bible is really a family affair. So with that major family affair, he set it up. He said, in thee, Abraham, all nations will be blessed. Why? Because I'm going to try it out on you. It, you you going to go through. You and your children will go through what I'm talking about. So by the time they come along, they can read about you and what you've been through. They can understand things to do and things not to do because you've been through it. They will be able to not just think naturally, but spiritually because I'm going to bring them forward. History helps you build. History helps you come forward. There are building blocks and stop me. Anybody can stop me. Just make sure Lady P see you. If I see you, I will recognize. I saw you like I saw Brother Troy come on. I'm looking at this little bitty box right here and I don't see much. However, history is supposed to give you something. When you look at the, the uh, upper room, and I'm talking off my head as the Lord down low. We, we, we that are saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost, we're so happy about the upper room. 
you know, on the day of Pentecost. They were all in the upper room with one accord. But does anybody think that without, I mean, if, if, if you, you can't have an upper room if there's not a bottom room. You can't have an upper floor if there's no bottom floor. You have to have a foundation. And it would just be there. But because they say upper room, that means there's a lower. Else they wouldn't distinguish upper. So you can look at another type and shadow. Let's see. I see a question. I'm sorry. I have to stop and try to go to it and find it. Yes, I am. Thank you, Lady P. I had to just stop. Yes, I am. Um, but you cannot you cannot have an upper room without a lower room. What am I saying by that? In the upper room, it represents grace. It represents the downpour of the Holy Ghost in the upper room. But the bottom floor support the upper room. The law is our school master, bringing us into the knowledge or consciousness of sin. Why do we need to know we have sinned? We were once sinners. We have to remember where we came from to appreciate where we are and where we're going. So the bottom floor, which you find down there that we just kind of overlook at times and just jump right into the upper room, we got to realize it wouldn't be upper room. There was no bottom. So why am I talking like this? Because as I review what we've already covered, we're going back to the table, that table that we call communion. And it's a wonderful thing. It's good. But communion is far broader than what we kind of think of. When we say communion, we think of taking the Lord's Supper. We think of the bread, we, the, the unleavened bread. We think of the wine in the cup. But the lesson is entitled, There is More on the Table. It's more to it. And it's more, literally, it was more on the table then. And we find, we have evidence that there was more on the table simply because Judas dipped. That person that betrayed our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, on that day, Judas dipped. And because he dipped into something else, something else on the table, we know it was more than just the wine and the what? Bread. Amen. So this study tonight is just to dig a little further. It's not to tell somebody they've done something wrong or they need to switch and now go into the rituals of the Jewish traditions. No, it's to simply explore, examine, slow down and see what else is on the table. And then connect the dots is what I call it. What's on the table, or what was on the table even at the, at the, at the Passover when we, they ate the Passover, it represented something that they came out of. Now that we are under grace, it represents something we came out of. It also represents something in the body of Christ. And it also represents something as we are the body of Christ. So these are all kind of interwoven connections that it takes time to just examine it and explore it. That's why my word is, is called explore. Because even after we explore, there'll be something else that somebody can discover or, or get a revelation to and say, hey, did you see that? Hey, did you see this? Did you notice that? Why? Because there's more on the table. More to our lives. More to the walk of God. More 
than just they took bread, they took the cup, they sang a hymn, and they went out. More than the prayer of his prayer. It's more. When he said, do this in remembrance of me, if we really take the time to remember, we won't just remember him on the cross. We're going to remember the suffering that's written that led him that went prior to the cross. We're going to remember what was written when the death angel came through. We're going to remember what was written that they went through. We're going to re- we're going to think of things the, the 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 journey of the exodus. See, I believe it was Evangelist Clark said it's not just you know what happened when you arrived when you obtained but what did the journey consist of because that's where your appreciation uh uh develops when you look think of the journey that's where a person's um learning really come from when they recall the journey that's where the gratitude sometimes we get you know you've heard people say i'm saved sanctified and satisfied Oh, I, I'm I'm good. I'm good. No, you ain't good. Because if you really did this in remembrance, with the full remembrance, it humbles you. And it gives you gratitude. And it makes you want somebody else to know this great sacrifice. It makes you examine yourself. It makes you remember as we were once. There's a scripture that said, as ye were. You, you you know, sometimes we forget. But the song says, lest I forget thy thorn crown brow. Lest I, it's not just about what happened on the cross, which is the ultimate because Jesus died. But guess what? Why did he die? Because I was lost in my sin. Why did he die? Because I was under the taskmaster, the, the, the hard taskmaster of sin. Satan had me bound. I would do what I didn't want to do. I, I, I wished I could have did better and couldn't do it. I was once bound. It will help me help somebody else come in. It'll help me feel for someone else and really um, have a heart for souls because I did this. I explored what else was on the table and I did it in remembrance. So that's what this is about. So now our first slide, Lady P, let me see if I can follow you with this little phone here. Okay, no, it didn't go that way. Oh, she's putting the slide up. Okay, all right, slide number one. And that is the the cover. And you will see a drop of blood. In the blood, you will see Jesus on the cross with the two thieves beside him in the larger silhouette. Because that was just something that was just stood out to me. My son Thomas said one time, Mama, all I need is one drop. That's some powerful blood. And guess what? Blood is very significant because if somebody get a sample of blood, they can tell who your father is. The blood speaks. The blood can give, there's an identifier in the blood. So one drop of blood will do. And I guess that's why I put that on there because I was thinking of what he said, one drop of blood. You see the pictures of what we call the cedar plate that's on that cover. And you see four cups and and we're going to try to touch bases on those four cups. Most of the time we are having communion. We all have our own cup. (laughs) And now we have the disposable kind, right? Once upon a time, we had the kind we had to clean. And I understand, I understand sanitary, you know, I understand, I understand. We are not under the law. Let me repeat that. We are under grace. But there's a significance with the four cups, and we want to talk about that tonight. And um, there are nuts on the table, egg. At one point, the egg was to remind them of the sorrow but the egg, in another sense, was reminding them of new beginnings. Um, there is something that they dipped into. Um, and we'll talk about that just briefly. We hit, at, hit it last week. 
and the bread. We're going to talk about why the pieces. We normally see all little pieces of bread, right? And even if they had a piece, do they have four? I mean, or three. Do they put it? I have it here. Actually, I have it. I have a real one, too. But I have this fake one, so I don't have to be breaking and having crumbs right here. It looks sort of like this, okay? And I have a real one, but I didn't want it crum crummy. But can you see it? That's now you don't find us eating bread that looks like this. I'm sorry. This this kind of lesson is better in in person because I really wanted you to handle things. But can you see it? Okay, okay, you can give me a thumbs up, Pastor P, because I right now that your your face is the only one I see. Okay, that's called a mo uh, uh, um moza. Let me make sure I'm saying it right, and I don't claim to know how to say it, but moza, matza, matza, matza. It has a z in it, but they don't you don't hear it that much. Now, and I'm gonna tell you how they put it in this little. It's it's something like let me put this down. Okay. It it looks like an envelope. It's made out of material. One section here, another section here, and another section here. Okay. And when we get to that section, this part, we'll talk about it because they're the reason why one is broken and one is the others are not. Okay. But you find this on the table. You find we're gonna go to slide number two. Well, you can see it a little bit closer. You see the mixture, the bone, the shank bone of the lamb. You see the bitter herbs on slide number two. You see the nuts. And sometimes they take the nuts and they make, make a, a mixture with, with uh, other substance in it. You know, uh, they may use almond butter or something like that. Um, but they mix that up to make a like a, a sticky kind of um nutty mixture to represent the mortar that they put between the bricks when they had to build the pyramids okay but we talked about that last year we talked about the bitter herbs and how they had to dip it in the salt water sometimes they use celery um but it needs to be a bitter herb because it's representing that bitter the bitter times that they had there and the salt water is representing um and sometimes they put the vinegar. They make it, they can make it tasty too, but it has to have salt in there because it's supposed to be the tears. And if you cried, have you ever cried and your tears kind of went in your mouth? If anybody did that, you cannot see a hand. I would only see your Pastor P, I'm sorry, but you just have to be the one I'm talking to because I see your face clearly, okay? And I just happen to need a face sometimes to talk to, okay? So can I see your hand? Have you ever cried? Amen. <laughs> amen. Amen. Yes. Amen. <laughs> okay, salty to you. Mm -hmm. Okay. The salt water, though they kind of make it with some have used a little wine, a, a little uh, balsamic vinegar, a little flavor to make when they dip the celery in it to make it taste good, you know, but it has to be salt water. Why? Because the tears, they cry. This poor man cried unto the Lord. See, yes, they cried in, in Egypt, but bring it forward. This poor man cried too, and the Lord heard him. Everything we're talking about is not locked into Egypt with the Jews, the Hebrews. It also comes forward, everything represented on this plate. And before this whole lesson is really done, I would love for while we're talking for you to pick one thing on the plate that can relate to something you've experienced in your life. Those are things, they're elements on the plate, but they represent experiences. And so while we're talking, before we are totally completed with the lesson, I want you to have one you want to talk about, at least mention and say, okay, Let's see, that egg represents me for this situation that I experienced. 
I experienced the egg on the plate because this or that happened. And this is how I went through it. That's what the remembrance is supposed to be connecting to. Okay, um, I, I, I went through some rocky times. So those nuts, that nut mixture, I, I, I can relate to the nut mixture. It's sticky. It's not just nuts, but it was mixed. It's called the corset, I believe. Let me make sure I'm saying it. Yes, it's the mixture. And it could be used, it could be apples because you all have, have um let's go let's go to the um let me see let's go to page lady p number six real quick the corset the our uh, horset is a mixture of apples nuts wine and spices it can taste good okay but it represents the mortar of the israel lights what they used for constructing the buildings during the slavery of the Egyptians. All of the elements of the cedar, of course, it alone is sweet. Okay, that's what they said. All of the elements of that is sweet. Alone is sweet. And this is a reminder of the hope of redemption. So the mixture has is lumpy, right? And um, at the job, they had something else to make it real sticky. I'm not sure if they put honey or something else in it, but it made it really like spreadable sticky, like it could be almond butter too. But whatever the case is, it was mixed and it has spices. But um, it was it was meant to bring hope, but reminding of what they used. You find the hardball egg, a roasted egg, and it's traditional, it's a traditional thing. It's hardball. It was eaten by mourners. The egg is used during the cedar to remind participants that they were always in mourning for the loss of their temple. Okay. The fact the fact the fact that the egg is roasted invokes the roasting of the sacrifice on the altar of the temple. Okay, and maybe not here, but they also mention the egg bringing, um, being uh, represented newness. Okay, um, because they are planning to rebuild the temple. Okay, so newness is still in the mix with the use of the egg. Okay, um, back up to the bitter herbs, um, the eating of the bitter herbs. You can find that in Exodus twelve and eight. In modern times, it's used. They used the horseradish. And have you ever tasted the horseradish before? I've tasted it, and it can make your oh my gosh! You can feel it all up your nose. Horseradish is nothing to play with. You got to be ready for horseradish. Yeah, I you I like it, but I have to prepare myself. Yeah, <laughs> you, it's pungent. It's just <laughs> it's well, Go ahead, Lady P. No, I was agreeing with you. It just, it takes you by surprise if you're trying to sneak and eat it. Oh, you can't sneak and eat horseradish because your eyes, we talk about those tears, you will have some. <laughs> just eating horseradish. It brings tears to your eyes, man. So, and it burns. It goes straight up. I mean, it's, it's, it's powerful. So the bitter was strong. The bitter was powerful. The bitter just, just it could have just wiped them out. Just stopped them in their tracks. You, you eat some horseradish and you didn't know it was in your mix. I tell you one thing, you're going to stop and make mention of that. <laughs> you will notice horseradish. So anyway, one of the most um, of the bitter herbs, bitterest herbs. Okay. And let's see the um, Mara, Mora. I don't want to say Mora because that means teacher in Hebrew. The Mara reminds the Jews that they were unable to sacrifice and worship to God. And that the bitter, the bitter, bitterer, okay? That was bitterer, okay? The slavery of Egypt. So horse reddish, uh, reddish is like the most bitterest herb. It set fire to your nostrils. It will just, like I said, stop you. Especially if you wasn't expecting it. But 
more than slavery because they were not able to sacrifice. It was like the most bitter herbs ever. So you might find another bitter herb, but horseradish is like at the top of the chain. And that represented the fact that they were not able to offer sacrifice. Have you ever felt like you are out the will of God? And thank God if you haven't, but just felt like God was so far away that he wasn't hearing you. It, just to feel disconnected to God. That's the most bitter herb you, you can relate to. If anybody ever backslid, knew they were wrong, knew they were not doing what the Lord said to do, and, and knowing that he can come any minute, he can crack the sky and you will be lost. See, it's not like, it, it's not what you don't know, it's what you do know, okay? That would be hurting you even more. Knowing I am wrong, and if it's not for you, thank God. Somebody may come on the line who are in a state of bitter herb. I know I can't really. I'm not feeling him. I'm 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 praying, but something is blocked, which means I cannot sacrifice like I would like to. I'm calling him, but I, it's like his, he has turned a deaf ear to me. I can't get to him. Like I'm, it's something there. But see, there's a scripture that says, he says, his ear is not, uh, it's not heavy that he can't hear. His arm is not too short, he cannot say. But your singing uh -huh, has separated. See, we were once separated from God. That's the most bitter herb you can think of. If you can't sacrifice to him, if you can't worship him, and when you worship God, you must worship him in spirit and in truth. So if I got all this, these lies blocking, I'm not worshiping. And if I know better, then I know my pray, praise is not enough. You want to worship. It's a difference. So when you know if there's anyone that know they're not in the will of God, that's a bitter herb like horseradish. And, and, and trust me, you don't want to take you by surprise because it burns even more when you wasn't expecting it. So they counted like that because they were unable to sacrifice and worship God. We want to always be able to worship. We're in a country that allows us to. We want to remember. We want to re remind ourselves there's some countries that can't do it as free as we can. But thank God for the spirit of God. We can always, we can take the law along with us wherever we go. But we never want to be separated from God and not able to worship in spirit and in truth. Not able to feel his presence because that would be just like the bitter herbs. And people can, with the Holy Ghost, walk into those kind of situations. But thanks be to God, this is under the law. Grace gives us an avenue where we can use the advocate that we have with the Father and not have to remain in such a state. Uh, going up a little bit, the vegetables, the elements. Uh, this element usually parsley dipped in salt water. We talked about that and eaten. Okay, and um, oh, and th they used a the hyssop that was used to apply the blood of the Passover of the lamb on the homes. And the blood is very, very significant because when the angels, uh, deaf angels saw the blood, he passed over that house and did not take any um, one's life. It says in the New Testament, hyssop was used to give the lamb of God, which is Jesus, vinegar. When Jesus said, I thirst, they used the hyssop. They use that same thing that sometimes is on this plate. Okay. The salt water represents the tears. We've said that during the bitter years of slavery and the Red Sea that God split during the Exodus. Okay. And I guess they said the Red Sea because um, our ocean is salty. So um, that's why they said, and the Red Sea. So moving down to um, our up to 
slide number three. We talked about this last week. We talked about what we call communion. Lady P brought out the fact that communion is far more broad. We can commune with God just being one-on-one -on -one with him in worship, in solitude. God desires to commune with man, just like he would walk in the cool of the day in the beginning, in the garden, before sin, before man sin, he enjoyed communing with Adam. And so because we are his bride and he took Adam or Eve out of man's side, he's bringing his bride back to his side through communion. Amen. We talked about communion being that uh, uh, how it consummates the marriage. We talked, we asked the question, what is the Passover? We talked, we asked the question, what is the Lord's Supper? How is interchangeably used? Was it truly the Last Supper? I believe Lady P brought out the Last Supper term used because it's the latest meal of the day, which is called Last. And it was also Jesus' Last Supper with them in that uh, state prior to stepping into his glorified body. And let me just say to put the blood on the mercy seat of God in heaven. So that was that supper. Okay. What does uh, eat the Passover mean? We talked about that too, because we hear the term eat the Passover and the Passover was like an event. How are you going to eat an event? But when we continue to study this lesson, we're going to find out that as Shiloh, let me say Shiloh. As Shiloh is a person, place, or thing, you find the word Shiloh interchangeably used as a person. Now, sometimes you find Shiloh as a place. Sometimes you find Shiloh as a thing, like the glory of God. Like, well, what is Shiloh? Well, sometimes you hear the Passover as an event. So you can't eat an event. But when we read and continue to study, we're going to realize Jesus is the Passover. Amen? So when we eat of his body, okay, we're eating the Passover because all of it was fulfilled in his body. So we can eat the Passover, <laughs> okay? And, and and I believe it was one of those Sundays, uh, I think Lady P's Sunday school lesson or either Evangelist Clark, they, uh, when Jesus said, I am the bread, your father's a bread manna in, in the wilderness and they die. But I, except you eat of me, my, eat my flesh, drink my blood. Well, that in our natural carnal mind, that's cannibal talk. Okay. Who wants to go around, bite somebody and eat their flesh, drink their blood. That just sounds gross. But when Lady P tells us, I guess I'm calling your name a lot. I'm sorry, Lady P, but you did say it. Only the spirit show will get it. Some things you got to come out of the carnal, fleshly, natural mind and think spiritual. That's why we are here in Bible class. That's why we come to Sunday school. And that's why we receive the Holy Ghost. Because the scriptures are spiritually discerned. And they must be discerned through the Holy Ghost. So some things you're not going to study upon. You're going to receive the revelation of God. Amen? So when he says, eat my flesh, he's not saying, come over here and bite my hand. And blah, 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 blah. No. He said, I am the word. He knew he was the word. I am the bread. I am the water. He was the bread and the word, bread and the uh, water. How are you going to be water, Jesus? He's the priest and the sacrifice. How are you going to be priest? He fulfilled the law. What we could not do, he did it. So he's the Passover. And we're going to find out that even more so, not just in the lesson, but as you walk with him, as you take him on, as you eat the whole roll, as you explore what else is on the table, you're going to find out he's represented there. 
on the table. Okay. Um, we uh, the word do this and remember some of me. I mentioned that just a little earlier. We want to really, really recall. And that's why we're studying this. Why is this statement not found in Matthew and John? We talked about that. We just noticed that they were coming from different angles because they were appealing to different audiences. Okay. And as that Pastor P said, when somebody's talking about a car accident, somebody may say the blue car hit the white car, but somebody else may say the white car was hit by the blue car. You see what I'm saying? Information is really there, but brought out a little different from a different angle. That's why. That's the only reason why it's not because one is lying versus, you know, and one telling the truth, different angles. What else is on the table? That's what we're talking about now. So I'm just reading, going through our quick summary. Um, what things regarding Jesus that now that's what I want us to do as we go further. What things regarding Jesus will we remember from the represented elements on the table? What their significance and how do they apply to us even today? Amen. And what uh, do we remember from partaking the elements of the cedar plate or the Lord's plate or table? Okay. And why do we say communion? So we went through all of that. We're now going to go to slide four just for the look of the closeness. We talked about the, the the chosen ones. Everybody wasn't invited into this room. Everybody wasn't invited to sit at this table because this was his chosen, his bride, the church, the first church, the early church. So it's a close, it's, it's, it's by imitation only. Jesus said, whosoever will now. So you see why grace is so wonderful? But in this room, you don't find 120 right here. Uh-uh. And then in the upper room, you only found those 120. In the room is the bride and the bridegroom. And that's what's represented here. Jesus and the church, early church. Okay, the next slide. We talked about this. We we have already covered this. The lamb bone is one thing. Um, this is a reminder that the lamb was killed and his blood was sprinkled on the doorpost that of the, of the Jewish houses. Now, it was because it was to them. But if there were some Egyptians that believed and went into the house where the blood was on the post, they would have been spared being a firstborn. Why? Because if you obey, you will reap what the word says. Even then, some, it, some, some Egyptians came through the Red Sea. So it's not just, it's, it's whosoever believed. You got to believe it. So it wasn't limited to the Jews because it's who was ever in the house. So when you can't come, it, it matters who you keep company with. It matters. It matters what you take part in. Amen. Amen. So if they may be an Egyptian, hey, hey, look, look, I haven't seen how many nine plagues, okay? Because <laughs> this one with that, that blood was the last one. If you notice, thinking about the plagues, the first plague had to do with blood. Right? Because when Moses put the um told Aaron to, to, to touch the water, the water was turned what to blood, right? So do you notice that it began with blood and it ended with blood? Do you notice the plagues? There were 10 plagues, and all the plagues had significance because um, um Egypt. The Egyptians, they worshiped many different gods, God of the sun, God of the this, God of the that. They had a whole lot of gods. So God didn't come in with armies of tanks and bullets. His army was his own creation, which was linked to what Egypt worshiped. So God was letting them know, look, 
y'all worshiping what I made. Okay? Y'all worshiping those critters, and I'll have them turn on you and do what I tell them to do. That's what was going on even with the 10 plagues. His the sovereign God, creator of all, use what they worship against them, his army. Okay? So now moving forward, I noticed that the sequence, the order, uh, 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 there's order, a cedar, I believe, I'm not sure if it's that word, but there's another word, mean order. There was an order of the plagues. He started with blood, and the last plague was with blood. Okay? So now, even with the last plague, even if somebody was watching plague number one, two, three, four, five, by the time they got to that 10 plague, look, I ain't playing. I'm going in with one of them Egypt, one of those Jews. <laughs> I'm going to go to their house tonight. tonight. I'm watching TV over their house tonight, okay? Why? Because I believe. I've been, I've, I've seen how many? Nine. Somebody should have believed something on the seventh, the third. Come on. How long does it take to believe? But God was hardening Pharaoh's heart. Why? To get him glory. There was a message in the hardening. And God didn't, didn't hide that from Moses. He told Moses he was going to do that to his heart. Why? Because it was the process, the journey. Okay? And so with that being said, some uh, e uh, Egyptians could have went into the house and were saved as well. Moving to slide um, number seven. And, and if anybody wants to say something, um, feel free. We're going to look tonight at the four cups. And... Um, like I said, we have our one cup and we drink our own wine, right? Our own grape juice and we throw our cup away. But back then, there were four on the table. And though we would probably call it unsanitary now drinking out of each other's cup, they did pass the cup. Okay? But there were four, also four cups of wine used at the various points at dip not all at one time but during the cedar during that time each i'm on i'm on slide number seven each of these glasses of wine had a name okay it has a name the first glass is the cup of sanctification you know that's that's it a lot right there first of all the cup and then you have <laughs> these cups. So let's make that clear. There is a cup. All right. There is the cup and there are these four. <laughs> so, but let's look at these four. Because when Jesus told that woman who said, uh, I want my sons to sit on both sides of you. He said, he asked her, okay, can they drink the cup that I'm going to drink out of? See, he wasn't talking about this cedar. He was talking about, he was talking about the cup. <clears throat> so that's a whole different cup. Like the ear. We have these ears. But there is an ear that hears what the spirit says to the church. So there's a difference. Okay? So now I'm back over here. The first glass is the cup of sanctification. Why would that be the first cup? Excuse me. <clears throat> oh, my water is at a distance. I'll be get that later. It's over there. But why would that be classified as the first cup? Anybody want to just talk on that first one? Why would you think they call that or uh, would name that the cup of sanctification? Being the first cup or glass. <clears throat> Because you need to be set apart and and it uh, 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 set aside for the purpose of. So sanctification is set apart. 
And so if that's going to be the first cup, a set apart is a preparation type of stance yeah. to get to the rest of the cups. That's just my opinion. That's a good, a good explanation because we're the chosen. He said, you didn't choose me. I chose you. Selected. Ecclesia. Called out from among them. I called you out just to experience this. I called you out from among them just to show you a more excellent way. I called you out from the among them to take you from the tradition to the living. You, you, you see what I'm saying? I called you out of Egypt. I have you as a nation set aside. See, so you got your natural Israel, but now we are spiritual Israel by faith. We have obtained or we're obtaining the Abraham covenant by faith. We have, if we have the Holy Ghost. So selected, sanctified. People say, I'm saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost. When you are sanctified, you are called out from among them and you are separate. Set aside for the master's use. Sanctified. So the first cup is the cup of sanctification. Okay? The second cup is the cup of judgment. And that's also in our hermeneutics. You find the principle of two. Good and evil. Remember when we went to the um, Holy Land exhibit and we saw the list of the two brothers? The two. Esau, Jacob. Ish. Go ahead. Somebody saying something? No, it's okay. Okay, the principle of the two. The second cup <clears throat> is a cup of judgment. Okay? And um, I lost my place. I'm sorry. The second cup <clears throat> is a cup of judgment. And why would you need a judgment if you don't have representation of what is good and evil, right? You, what's the need of judging? What's the need of choosing if there's not good and evil, bad and good? Isaac, es uh, um, Ishmael, Esau, Jacob. You see what I'm saying? Heaven, hell, angels, demons. <laughs> okay. Two. But God saw the evil that Israel went through and the evil that was put upon them and how he brought them out. And he was going to bring judgment on Egypt for what they did. People cannot do the people of God wrong and don't feel they will not get paid for that. What you do to the least of his, his little ones, you've done enough to him. So the, 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 the thing we have to realize is he has a record. And judgment is in the, he's the righteous judge. So we don't want the judgment. We want to be under grace. We want to be forgiven. But in this, on this table, God was going to deal with Egypt for how they did the children of Israel. Remember who was that? Was it the Malachites? Somebody just wouldn't let Israel pass through. And the Lord said, I'm going to remember them. And he didn't get them right away. Pastor, are you saying saying something? I, I believe it was the Amalekites. Yes, you know, and, so, and, mm -hmm. he, and like you say, and he did eventually get you know get them for that. Yes, yeah, you know, so yeah, they just want to pass through. Right, right. And they refused exactly. They yeah. them. He, and 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 the Lord said, "I'm gonna remember them." And it was years, but he came back and got them. You see what I'm saying? So he's who 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 can he say? Who can who can uh, question him? Who gives him counsel? He can love and he can hate. Ooh, God is love. God don't hate nobody. He said he hated Esau. 
okay? Esau wept bitterly for space for repentance and found none. God can love who he want to love and he can hate too. But God is love. Yes, he is. And he's God. He is sovereign. He does what he want to do. And who's going to counsel him? Who's going to tell him what he ought to do and what not to do? So if he decides to set his love on Israel and he set his love on them, he picked them. He decided. If he decided to bring us out of our sin, if he can't nobody even come to the father except he what? draws them. So if he picked us to draw us, if he picked us to give us a mind to come out of our sin, a mind to even repent for, for, uh, uh, for our sin, we can't just do it at, oh, I woke up this morning and I decided. No, you did. He drew you and he gave you the mind. And then he helped you understand what yielding to the spirit of the Holy Ghost really meant. He had to do this for us. But everybody's not going to be saved. So he is the righteous judge. He set his love on who he will. He have mercy on who he will. So when we think of that cup of judgment, we could have been out there and remained out there. We could have been counted as an enemy to God because we had the wrong mind. But he decided to let us come on in with the right mind. So we have to remember he's the righteous judge. Second cup is a cup of judgment. Third cup is a cup of redemption. We needed a savior with his own arm. He stretched out his arm and he brought redemption to mankind. So we, we I think that's the main cup we really be thinking about when we take communion because we're thinking about the blood. Right? So when we take communion, I think we really be thinking of the third cup. Just automatic, because we're thinking of redemption. We're not thinking of cup number one, <laughs> cup number two. We kind of, mind, our minds just really like our one cup is a third cup. Does that make sense? The one cup we normally use is pretty <laughs> much the third cup. It's the third cup, uh -huh. yeah. And then you come okay. to the last one. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> That's <Yeah>. it. <laughs> this is my blood, which was given for you, right? This is blood. Out of his side came blood and water. Water for baptism and blood for what? Our redemption. 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 So when we're taking communion, our mind is really on one cup. <laughs> cup number three. But guess what? In our spirit, spiritually, ah, yeah, with the Holy Ghost, we can have all four cups in our bodies. With the Holy Ghost just sipping out of one cup, we can feel the essence ah, yeah, yeah, my shot, of all four cups. Because we are under, under grace. It's spiritually designed. It's not just a tangible. I have some cups here. There are the originals here. Like I said, this is the kind of lesson that's better in person. I, you see that one? I would call that my, the redemption, the cup mm -hmm. number three. Because here's my cup number. Nope, nope, nope. I will call this cup number one. I'm sorry. Can y'all see it? Let me take this off. Hold on one minute. Oh, sorry. That didn't help. I'm trying to take off my background. Okay, forgot how to do it. But anyway, this is my cup, number one. That is the cup of <clears throat> sanctification. Cup number two. Okay. This is my cup, number three. See how big that one is? Okay. Ah, there it goes. Let me take it up a little bit. Let me come back with it. Okay. My cup number three. Why? Because this is, it holds more. 
and it had to be enough blood to redeem the world. Even though I said one drop could do it. But that's the cup. That's what I would say. And the fourth cup, cup it doesn't have the little, uh, the little cutie part right there. It's just here, but it's not small. Okay? The cup of praise. The fourth cup is the cup of praise. If you notice when we are having communion, we deal with the fact that in our spirit, he called us out from among them. He chose us to sit at this sacred table. So we have the sanctification in our hearts. And we know that he didn't leave us in sin. He could have, but he didn't. He gave us the mind to repent of our sins and come out. And so we realize he didn't judge us for being what we were. But he loved us and had mercy and compassion on us, brought us out. So the righteous just decided to have mercy. And the third cup is the cup we always think about his blood for redemption. And once we finish drinking, we automatic, automatic praise. Amen. So without Amen. taking, we don't have all these cups all around the table. <laughs> you are operating with the cups. Amen. The cups. Yes. 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 When, you, when you drink it, mm -hmm. whether it's grape juice or wine, after you pray, your mind should be spiritual and you should be seeing and thinking on the blood. Mm -hmm. He bled before he even got nailed. They beat him. Yes. He was bleeding in judgment hall. Yes. He was bleeding when they put the thorn or crown. The, the crown amen, amen, the amen. Yes. He was losing blood while he was on the way. Hallelujah. When we remember the, the journey, not just the hanging glory, the journey to the cross. Hallelujah. They beat him in judgment hall. You see the second cup? Judgment. Somebody had to pay for that sin. Judgment. Ta -da. Why? Because the, the, the law was holy. Somebody got to do it. Nobody was worthy. So he said, prepare me a body. Glory. Hallelujah. Anyway, moving along, he said at the Last Supper, Jesus took the first cup and promised, okay, his disciples that the next time he would drink the fruit of the vine with them, the next time he would drink it, it will be in the kingdom. That's a lot of discussion. People have debates over what that really means. But when I think about the kingdom of God, where is the kingdom? In what? The heart of man. Right? So we can commune with him like right now. And he can partake. He said the next time. Hallelujah. The next time. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, shot. I'm going to drink it in you, with you, with you, in you. Hallelujah. Because the kingdom of God is where? Hey, in the heart. Yes, the yes. Yeah. How you going to drink it with me? Ah, hallelujah. Because I'm the Holy Ghost of hope of glory. When I go away and prepare a place for you, that's being prepared. But see, I'm going to put this blood on the mercy seat of God in heaven. When I come back, I'm be eating and drinking, but we're not having, we're not eating the pasta. We're gonna be eating fish and we're gonna be eating some other stuff. Okay, so that's not the meal. But the next time I drink this, Shanda, hallelujah, I'm gonna drink it with you in the kingdom. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. A lot of people say that's over there in the here and after. Oh, but I can commune with him even tonight. Because the kingdom is on the inside, the heart of man. And he can drink with me. Ah, he's the Holy Ghost. 
Hallelujah. Okay, moving right along. That's just how you, that's how I see it. It's a revelation. Hallelujah. It says here in the cedar, uh, Jesus took the third cup of redemption. Okay. Now that cup of redemption is serious because he had to, everybody couldn't. Who gonna redeem man? Who can? But when he took the cup, he took the responsibility. You hear what I'm saying? When you take the cup, you're, you're saying, yes, Lord. Hallelujah. You're taking responsibility for whatever is in the cup. Ah, that's why the woman said, when, he, when he, he answered the woman, she said, I want my sons to sit on your left side and your right side. Yo, can they drink of the cup that I'm going to drink of? Oh, but mind you, they will. See, keep reading. Because if you're going to reign with him, hallelujah, you're going to suffer with him. That means you're going to drink of the cup. I'm not talking about these one of these four. The cup. Hallelujah. If you're saying yes, Lord. You got to be committed and not just involved. Because if you just involved, you will look at the cups and leave them on the table. Hallelujah. Some people that just come that just involved will pick up the fourth cup of praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. But they're not going to touch the first one. Ah, because that's a sanctification. They're not going to touch that. Mm -hmm. Because they're being judged by what's in their heart that's revealed because he knows the heart of me. Yes. Hallelujah. They're not going to pick up the third one. Because they don't want to deal with that redemption. Because it's suffering. Hallelujah. To be even redeemed, you got to lay aside every weight. Yes. To mm -hmm. even come to get it, you got to pass your own self down. You got to put your all on the altar of sacrifice. No, oh, I don't want the third cup. Let me just stick to the fourth cup. Praise the Lord. Why? Because everything that has breath can praise the Lord. Praise happens on the outer court. Hallelujah. I got a Mosanda. But if you go on behind the table, you go on behind the table. Every cup on this table. I got a Mosanda. Hey, because what it takes to go behind the veil is everything on the table. Everything yeah, on the table. Yes, yes. I got a Mosanda. I got a Mosanda. Hallelujah. Some people just stick with the fourth cup. Oh, glory to God. And I did tell you the last time they have an empty chair at the table because it's put there for Elijah because they were waiting on Elijah to come. Hallelujah. Because they're looking for the Messiah. But we thank God we know who the Messiah is. We don't have to put an empty chair at the table. He is sitting in us. My, my, mama said he walk up and down in. Hallelujah, we made room. We sing on Christmas. Uh, prepare him room. Let every heart prepare him room. Well, they physically put a chair at the table, an empty chair. But see, when we are making room for Jesus, I believe Lady Peace to have us sing, somebody sing a song during praise and worship on Zoom, uh, making room for Jesus. I'm making room for you. I, I'm making sure you have priority in my life. I, I want you here. See, the Messiah has come. Jesus said, I am he. The woman at the well, she said, he will come and show us everything. He said, I, it is I that's speaking to you. While they waiting on him in the temple with their long, uh, uh, beautiful garments on, He's talking to somebody not dressed the best. Hallelujah. He's talking to somebody that would give him a real ear. He's talking to somebody that really won't change in their life. He will introduce himself as a Messiah to somebody who will deal with truth. Hallelujah. He said, go call your husband. Hallelujah, your husband. He said, I don't have a husband. See, he can work with truth. He will introduce himself and identify himself as a Messiah, the one who he is, the one who will give him truth. Hallelujah. 
Oh, but if we think we got it all good because we forgot where we came from. If we think we all that in a bag of chips, not remembering the mort, not remembering the rigor, not remembering the taskmasters, the heavy load of sin we were all under. If we forget, he, he, can't, he ain't dealing with you. No, nah. but when you deal with truth, Lord, I remember. No, uh -uh. no, I don't have a husband. Yeah, you spoke truth. Now I can help you. You didn't cover nothing. You have five. And the one you with ain't yours. She didn't keep nothing back. She had truth. See, he's seeking for the true worshipers. Those that worship in spirit and in truth. Why? Because I can't. The ones that got it, think they got it all together. You won't notice what else is on the table. You won't notice the real meaning to the shank bone. You won't even care about the salt water. Why? You just get into the praise cup. Mm-hmm. Because we doing church and not being the church. The church is on the table. Okay, here we have here um, the third cup was redemption. Okay. And use and use that cup as a symbol of the new covenant in his blood. Notice the three. Significant number. God's completion. Three days in the grave. Three. So much is with three. We won't even go into that. And the three, the three uh 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 believe in first John, it said these three agree in one. And these three are one. That's that brings us actually, that's explaining this. Uh, remember, I told you the, the compartments is three. Three compartments. And they put the bread in here. And one is supposed to be broken. But it's supposed to be hid. That one piece is hid in, the other piece is put in what they call this other envelope, not envelope, but uh, napkin and cut and, and folded and hidden. And it's called an apicoma. And, and kids play a game with it, who can find the apicoma. But without knowing, they're taught, they're showing you the revelation. There's, we're, we're hid with Christ. We're hid in God. With Christ, we're hid. He was hid. The revelation is hid from people that come to him with carnal minds. It's hidden. And when Paul said, take, eat, this is my body, he said this, which is broken. Notice one was broken. The others were whole. But the one that was hid was broken. This was representing Jesus. Let's move forward. In Exodus, uh, okay, we talked about that. Because that was, oh, let me read that. And I'm still on slide seven. In Exodus six and six, the Lord God promised his people that he would, would save them from slavery. He said, I am the Lord. I am the Lord and will bring you out from the yoke of the Egyptians. I will free you from being slaves unto them. I will redeem you with an outstretched arm with mighty acts of judgment. This is all represented on that plate. The phrase with an outstretched arm is repeated throughout the Old Testament in connection with the Passover remembrances. And they gave the scriptures Deuteronomy 4, 34, 7, 19, 9, 29, 26 and 8, 2 Kings 17, 36, Psalms 136, 12, even Jeremiah 32, 21, when I'll stretch on. And it says here, can it be a coincidence that in the New Testament, the Messiah has both of his arms stretched out as he freed us from sin and brought us salvation? There are no coincidences. That was on purpose. Everything. Everything. God does this on purpose and with purpose. Even when you get to Noah, when, when Noah was building the ark, 
God told him to build it three stories. You got it right here. God told him to put one window. You will see that later because this is three components, right? And it's in one. The three in second in, in first John, one said these three agree in one. The blood, the water, and, and the spirit. Then another one said, these three, these three are one. And we can find that. I don't like to quote it. Pastor, could you find that for me? Because that's one that doesn't need to be misquoted. John, um, these three agree. And these three are one. That's in first John. So we're talking about that bread. Even in this, and it's in 1 John somewhere. One, two, three sections in one. They meant it, but this is a revelation. And who, what are we talking about? What are we putting in here? Bread. Jesus, the bread of life. God in the flesh, reconciling man unto himself. Okay, while he looked for that, moving forward, it's not a coincidence. There are no coincidences, are all on purpose. Going to slide eight. Um, this, we talked about this. I wanted to, oh, here we go. On slide eight, I want to kind of skip down to the where it says another symbol of Christ on the cedar plate is the mosa. I did talk about the unleavened bread. Okay, so you see where I am, Lady P. As did, did, let me. No, not that one. Slide eight. Or did I, wait a minute, let me, I, I must have switched it. Go to seven. Go to seven. Because I'm reading, uh, I must have switched it while I was at work. I looked at it again. Yeah, I switched it on my computer. Okay, that's where I am. But I'm not reading all of it. Uh, oh, yes, let me go up here. I'm not reading all of it, just pull out some points. Remember I said the order. You see where it says in the second um, paragraph, the Hebrew word for cedar means order remember i told you the 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 order of the um plagues it was significant i said it started with blood ended with blood there was order there order on the plate there's order in the in everything that god does he does things decent and what in order okay uh um one time, David said we didn't do this as uh, in um, due order. Remember that word, that phrase, due order? When they were carrying the Ark of the Covenant back, he was so happy to get it back that he still had it on the cart that the Philistines had it on. And then it tried, if it was about to fall over and one man helped save, keep it from falling, but he was supposed to touch it and he died. And it was because he was out of order. And David was, felt, felt so bad. And he had, um, uh, I, I want to say Obed, it was not Obed, but somebody, this man to keep the ark, to babysit it for about three months. And God blessed his house. And what happened is David had to pull away from the people and seek the Lord for a way to get the ark back into his place. And he had to face the fact that he did not do what God said in the order. Do order. They were supposed to carry the arcs on staffs and the people were supposed to follow so many feet back. Why am I saying this? Because God has order. His order is the do order. The order to do it in. And cedar, the cedar plate, the word cedar means order. Every part of the Passover has significance. That's why even after we just examine this, there'll be so much more we haven't even touched. 
because Jesus is the Passover. That's why I said, how are we going to eat the Passover? It's an event. It's more than an event. Amen? Okay, so I just saw that word, uh, the order, because I, I remember talking about that. Okay, where it says here, Christ on the cedar plate is the masa or unleavened bread. And some, there's sometimes the word unleavened represents uh, sin. But, leaven, I'm sorry, leaven represents sin. But leaven is not always sin. Leaven causes something to rise. But it's depending on what's rising. Because some things can rise up in us and we got to squash back now. We got to plead the blood. Oh, I rebuke you, Satan. See, that's that leaven rise. <laughs> we want to make sure we keep the leaven, keep it unleavened. And then we need God to come forward so there can be a positive use of the word leaven. So we want to not be locked into one verse. We want to be open-minded is how we use it. Okay. It says here the Jewish people left Egypt and they were in haste and they had no time to allow their bread to rise. Okay, so we know the purpose for the unleavened bread. That's what this kind of bread is. That's why, and it's very crumbly too. Did I bring mine over? Okay, it's over there. But I have, it, 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 it wasn't always pretty. It was hard and crumbly, okay? This is from my school, so this is not crumbly. Okay, it says here, let's see. Um, uh, I want to go to the next well, let me finish reading. From then on, the Passover was followed by the a week-long feast of unleavened bread. It wasn't one time, one day. It was seven days. It was a week long of this. And um the um it was supposed to just keep their minds on the Lord, keep them focusing on the fact that He brought them out. Okay. And it says here in the next paragraph, for example, the masa is placed in a bag called the ekot. That's what this bag is called. And I want to get to that. And that word said it means one. Notice the revelation. It's not by coincidence that they call it one. We could say one piece of bread represents what they would say, the father the Son, the Holy Ghost, and what? One. But notice the Son in the middle, broken. Make sense? Because this one, this piece right here was the only one broken. And it was hid. Why would it be hid? What's the purpose of that? Because see, he was to come. He wasn't there yet. He was to come. It was a type and shadow. So that one in the middle was broken, but it was hid. A piece of it was hid. So I, I just wanted to point that out. And the and this 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 little thing is called one. It means one with the pieces, the three. So, Pastor, did you find that scripture? And we're gonna end with that, and that's gonna represent. That scripture is representing the bread, the matzah, in this, what they call, ekot, okay? Amen. And, that, and um, scripture is coming out of 1 John uh, 5, starts at verse 6, says, This is he that came by water and blood, even Jesus Christ, not by water only, but by water and blood. And it is the spirit that bears witness because the spirit is true. For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, okay. the Word, and the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. And these three are one. And there are, are. And, the, and there are three that bear witness in earth, the spirit and the water and the blood. And these three agree in one. And notice the common denominator word, one. Yes. Mm -hmm. One. 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 Mm -hmm. Yes. And Jesus uh -huh. is wrapped. Yes. So he said, prepare me a body. Mm -hmm. 
because I'm going to take all of those things they say, all of their traditions, and it's going to be wrapped in my body. And it was wrapped when he was wrapped in swaddling clothes, when he was wrapped coming off the cross. And then when they did this in remembrance of him, they wrapped the bread. When you go to a real nice restaurant and they put the bread in a basket, don't they wrap it? I'm, I'm talking about nice restaurants. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's <laughs> a <good. laughs> Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'm talking about good bread. Yeah. That bread that you keep on eating and almost fill you up before you get your meal. <laughs> <laughs> they wrap, they cover, yes. Mm, they uh, cover. Yes. <laughs> Do you think these things are coincidences? No. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God. The word was God. All things. All, all mean all. Everything. All mean everything. All things were made by him. And without him was not anything made that what was made. So when you go to that nice restaurant, they wrap that bread so pretty, and they wrap it. It's still confirming the word of God at the table. So even though, even though there are other things, we didn't really get into the shank bone. We didn't get into when they uh, even plant the bitter herbs just in time for it to be grown for Passover. We didn't get into all those significance. We didn't get into what we call uh, uh, what you call it, um, Good Friday. But it's so much because there's more on the table. And when we do use, partake of what's really on the table, we not just on the physical table, but in the table of our heart. Remember he said, I'm going to write my law where? On the table of the what? Heart. They're going to have four cups oh, yeah, in the heart. Okay? They're going to have a shank bone in the heart. Bitter herbs in the heart. Because when they sit down to their little square pieces of bread, it's going to be more. When they sit down to their little disposable cup, bread on the bottom, cup back. No, it's beyond that. Jesus died. But there was a journey prior to the cross. And then he did his job after he got off the cross. He wasn't even done. He said it is finished, but that was finished. And he said, but I'm going to drink with you again. When I do it, though. But when I do it, it's going to be in the kingdom. Ah, and where is the kingdom of God? In the hearts of man. So let us continue to commune with the Lord because we are his bride, the selected, the called out, the ecclesia that was invited in the room at the table. God bless you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I, I hope you enjoyed that. It's, it's, it's seen, we see that it's more on the table. Glory to God. And we was able to... Uh, he, and I love it when evangelists are able to go through and, and for us each and every uh, component, every, everything that was on the plate, she allowed for us to be able, she went through it and it allowed us to be able to see what, how much more, you know, for, and this is a perfect time. And like we said uh, once before, right before Easter, right before the uh, Passover, right before the, uh, uh, for us, we know that when Christ is with the resurrection. So this is perfect timing to be able to get an understanding or as well, you know, it's more, it's more, it's more on the table, more about communion, 
more of it's more than what we see and so it's so great to be able to go through and this is only part two <laughs> we went through part one and she and she didn't have enough time part two she didn't have enough time so you can see that it is a more it's more as a part three so we thank god for it and it takes a time and this is what and this is why we we come to bible class to so we can get an understanding uh for us on the word of god and and we see all that and then we see how everything the three three and in, in turn like i said all because it's about being one but we allow us to be able to see uh for us in scripture and then how the Lord uses everything, you see three, you see you in, in one, and it's how it all lines up. You, that's the, what I love it by when it all lines up, glory to God. And that's when his word lines up. So uh, awesome. So he, 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 beautiful evangelist, thank God for allowing us to, um, to you know, for us to be here tonight, to be able to, to go through and uh, be able to see that there's more on the communion table. Glory to God. At this time, we, we uh, there's no announcements for uh, for this week. Um, so we, uh, I just want to, uh, for us, uh, we're still getting things together for the church. We still getting a few a few things to be ready for this weekend. So we're looking forward to uh, being in being in the sanctuary on Sunday. Um, but again, we thank God for each and every one that was with us tonight, the ones that's coming on later. And we just thank God for this for this lesson. There is more on the table. Glory to God. So there's nothing else we getting ready to dismiss. But again, we just thank God for everyone that's with us and the ones that's coming on later to be able to enjoy and get an understanding was on the table the communion table glory to god father god we thank you tonight we thank you for allowing us to come together one more time we thank you for each and every one that's with us tonight oh lord the ones that's coming on later lord god we thank you a lot for evangelist owens for being able to lord put on a heart a lot to be able to open up this uh the lesson for us to be able to see there's more on the communion table glory to god and not just be able to see it but be able to go through and explain for us each and every uh, thing that was on the table and the, and the and the significance about it, O oh Lord, for each and every item, O oh Lord. We thank you, O oh Lord, and we praise you for allowing us to be able to, to know more about the, your word, O oh Lord. And we thank you and we praise you. But Lord God, we ask you to continue to look over us, O oh Lord, cover us all with your blood, O oh Lord, in the name of Jesus. We ask you to continue to look over uh, the bereaved families as uh, that are still going through. We ask you to continue to comfort them and strengthen them. We ask you to continue to look over the sick and shut in, Lord, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Lord God, as we leave this place, but not your presence, we ask that you bring us back at the next appointed time, and we'll forever give you the honor, and we'll forever give you the glory. In Jesus' mighty name we pray, amen and amen. Be blessed, saints. Enjoy the rest of your night there. And enjoy.